This week in Grace's Girls Club, quite the accomplished woman. I am joined by Virginia. Virginia, tell us, introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about you and the company you work for. Yes, so I'm Virginia Shelton. I'm the president and CEO of Intuitive Research and Technology Corporation. And walk us through your day to day. What exactly does that entail? Uh, well, as president and CEO, it kind of entails a little bit of everything from from the CEO job of kind of setting the strategic vision for the company and the and the future and kind of the company we want to be um, to pretty much from the president role, day to day execution and making sure we deliver. So of the letters in STEM, science, technology, engineering and math, which letter or sequence of your sequence of letters would you say most applies to your job? Um, I would probably say technology and engineering, probably both at this point. So from for what we do in the engineering services company, technical services company that we are supporting the Department of Defense, um, we have to look at technology a lot being on the leading edge. Um, so from a technology standpoint and then from delivering our engineering capabilities. So for those who don't know, walk me through what Intuitive does. What's your mission as a team? Um, our mission is to deliver uh, technical expertise. Um, we're an aerospace engineering and analysis company. We do a lot of work for the Department of Defense, so the Army, Navy, Air Force, um, you know, a lot here in Huntsville. We have locations um, around the United States. So helping our customers, helping the government solve hard problems. So tell me if I'm wrong, but I would imagine with the job of your stature at a company that has a noteworthy mission like you all do, it's got to be pretty easy to wake up and go to work every day. I mean, of course, it still has its struggles, but it must it must really fuel you to have that mission behind you every single day. Oh, absolutely. I am so blessed. I say I get up every morning and, and love coming to work. And that has a lot to do. We have great folks. Um, the mission of the company is is set from our founders. So this is our 25th anniversary. So we're excited about that. Congratulations. Um, Thank you. And we say our mission is that we're just getting started. So we want to be the company for the next 25 years that has the same values, ethics and, and employee satisfaction that we've had all these years. So um, so getting up every day and coming to work and working with the best people in the industry, um, supporting a mission, um, the warfighter and making sure that we deliver products that, that help that mission. Um, yeah, it's amazing. That is absolutely awesome. I love it. I love it. So walk me through. If I'm a young girl and I see you and I think that might be something that I could do one day, how educationally would you tell me to get there? Walk me through your path and what you would advise anyone else to do in their schooling and their degree. Absolutely. So from, from my past, I got my undergrad in uh, industrial and systems engineering from Auburn University. Um, so great engineering program. We've got a lot of great um, engineering programs in the state um, and really around the country. So uh, pick somewhere that you feel comfortable with and it'll offer you a good education. Um, then I went on to get my master's here at UAH locally um, in engineering management. Wonderful program, great institution, and they really supported me while I was in my career because um, I was working at the time that I, I did that. Um, so pick a great institution um, and just make sure make make it keep happening. Um, you can make it through. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Embrace those challenges, right? Absolutely. So I did not realize that you were already in the workforce when you went back to get your master's. Would you advise others to do that or would you say do it all in one foul swoop before entering into the workforce? You know, we that's a that's a debate for definitely here. In, <laughs> um, I tell our engineering director of engineering all the time because he went straight through. He got his um, Jeremy Clark. He got his undergrad and then went straight into his master's. And he advises a lot of the engineering um, disciplines to do the same. Uh, for me, I think engineering was such a amazing thing. I learned a lot through my co-op experiences and it really became something that I don't think I grew up knowing that I wanted to be an engineer. And so through those experiences, um, I learned that that's really what I wanted to do. So I needed a little time to be in the workforce, really understand what part of engineering I enjoyed and loved. Um, so, so I think I learned a lot more when I went back for my master's because I gave myself some time in between. So I think it works depending on if where you're at, um, if you know exactly where you want to be and exactly what discipline you want to be in, or if you need a little time to kind of navigate your career and figure out what your, what your advanced education should be focused on. 
That's kind of that flexibility and that ability to embrace challenges that you were talking about before, you know, see what works for you and be okay with being adaptable and taking it as it comes. Yes, absolutely. So piggybacking off that, walk me through why you chose this field. You said you didn't always know you wanted to be an engineer. So what kind of narrowed down the choice for you? Um, you know, that's a hard one. I actually <laughs> thought I wanted to be in the medical field growing up and talked to several folks um, and decided on engineering. And I wasn't real sure, you know, when I went into industrial and systems, folks said that was more of a kind of a general engineering at the time. And you would get a lot of, of um, education in, in all the disciplines and it can kind of help focus you. Um, but then once I started doing my co-op experience, um, I love that side. I love the people side and the and the process side of industrial and systems engineering. Um, so I think that's what helped me pick is, is like you said earlier, being adaptable if, if I needed to change and kind of go a little bit different direction. Um, but I enjoyed what I picked early on. Very cool. So walk me through your first few positions right out of college. Obviously, you have your, worked your way up to the tippy top, which is incredibly impressive. But walk me through kind of the path you took to get to where you are now. So straight out of school, I went to work for a company down in Eufaula, um, Alabama, out of out of Auburn and got a lot of hands on experience in the commercial lighting industry. Um, and I worked for that company for for several years, had a lot of opportunities. Um, there ended up in Atlanta at a at kind of a smaller company, um, a kind of a startup company, and stayed there for a little while. And then actually went back to to the first company I was with, um, Cooper Lighting, in at their headquarters in Atlanta. Um, and so had a lot of opportunity with them to try different things, um, from you know helping locate plants and set up production facilities. Uh, to being on the kind of the product design side of the product um, and releasing products to the field and that kind of thing. Um, and even managed a warranty department for a little while um, in, in transition between um, different things in the company. So got a lot of experiences there. It was a great experience for me. Um, you know, about 19 years ago now, I wanted to move back to this area. I'm from Scottsboro originally, and most of my husband and my family is from is from local. And so um, found the opportunity with Intuitive to do that. They took a chance on me kind of at being outside of the this industry um, to get started in the industry. So started really with Intuitive as kind of a entry level kind of engineering, um, working at some of the depots, helping them set up production facility, production lines and those kind of things. Um, and then just kind of moved around in the company and got to try a lot of different things in the company and, and you know, work with different customers and manage different groups. Uh, so it's been 19 years and it's been a wonderful experience um, and the company has been wonderful to me for sure. Wow, that's an awesome, awesome story. And I'm sure that uh, your employees and coworkers can attest to this, but I would imagine all of those different experiences in such a spectrum, on such a breadth of knowledge that you now have, is probably part of what makes you such an efficient and loved leader. Well, I hope so, and I and I hope I am, um, <laughs> because we have, we have the greatest folks. And I say, you know, I tell people all the time, you, you know, find a company that'll, that'll help you do that, right? We've got... We've got the, the greatest folks and um, we all work together as a team. And yeah, you never know where your path's gonna lead you. Um, and sometimes we get stuck thinking our path has to be a certain one certain thing, but it's all of those experiences, whether you realize it at the time or not, that really make, make um, the things you look back on and the things you remember and the things that make you be the, the leader that you wanna be. I could not agree more. So many times it's so cool to, to look at a situation unfolding and realize that really you feel like God put you in that situation five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, just for this exact moment, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And you don't even realize it at the moment, but you look back and go, that was, that was the opportunity and, and I'm glad I took it. Absolutely. So you may feel like you already touched on this several minutes ago. If you do, let me know. But what is the best part of your job? The best part is it being, see, the best part is probably just being able to enjoy coming every day and be part of a company that you feel passionate about. Um, so many people, I think, um, 
you know, they pick a company and they don't necessarily believe in the mission or the, the values or what the company is all about. And I would imagine that makes it hard to go to work every day. So for me, I say I have the easiest job in the world because the foundation is there. What, what's important to us as a company is super solid. We say it's our employees, our ethics and the communities that we're involved in. And we do all of our decisions really center around those three things and doing those three things well. So that makes the rest of it easier, right? If folks love coming to work and feel like you're treating them well, and, and then they can focus on the hard mission, which is supporting our customers and delivering hard, hard things um, it, to those missions. So, so I think that's what I enjoy the most about is about the company is that no matter what challenges come, you know, we can solve them if you have the fundamental basis there. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what a great message to all of us as well. So if that was one of the best parts of your job, what are some of the challenges that you're tasked with problem solving to fix every day? You know, I think just normal business challenges, right? We talked about it's being our 25th anniversary, just making sure that we keep the company stable um, for, for the future, right? So that we can look back and say how proud we are we are that the company is continuing to be stable throughout the years, making sure that that work's coming, that that people are employed. Um, you know, when we say that we're a family, that means we have 600 family members. And so <laughs> you want the best for you want the best for each one of them. So every day, making sure that that they feel secure in what they that the, the company that they're a part of. Um, and then, you know, in any kind of industry, there's day to day challenges of of, especially in ours, of contract changes and, and re regulations and, and all those kind of things. But those are easy to, to, um, to solve those challenges if, if you're all working together to solve those. So um, it's something new, it's something different every day. Yes, I can imagine it is. And even in, you know, just the brief few minutes that I've known you here, just hearing your, your mission and really where your heart is, it's no wonder that Intuitive is so successful. If you're the one that's setting the pace and, and kind of setting the tone in the company, it is no wonder that it's been going so well for you guys. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. So I know you're really busy, Virginia. I want to let you get back to uh, saving the world and, and keeping the pace <laughs> and keeping everyone happy. But before I let you go, I do want to ask if you had a message to young girls or young students in general who wanted to join the STEM workforce one day, what would your message to them be? Uh, definitely be authentic, um, which is, a, uh, I think, an odd thing to say. But I think the thing I've learned the most throughout my career is that women, young women, have so much to offer. And a lot of times, we think we can't be authentic in that, right? We think we have to follow um, our peers or follow um, somebody different, you know, um, and, and kind of follow, and be a follower instead. So I think the easiest thing, and I think that's what makes my job so easy too, is just find what you're passionate about and be authentic because um, young women especially have lots to offer. We can, we can solve hard problems and we have the intelligence for it, but we can also see different sides of that and be empathetic and, and caring as leaders. Um, so find a place that you can be authentic and stick to that. There you go. A female leader inspiring other female leaders. That is awesome. Well, Virginia, thank you. thank you so much for your time today. President and CEO of Intuitive. It was awesome meeting with you. Thank you so much for sharing your years of expertise and your wisdom with us. Thank you, Grace. I appreciate it. Have